Hi, this is Dr. Dave, and in this video we're going to be looking at graphing a revenue function and a cost function that's been given to you in the technology assignment. We're going to do this by using a product called Desmos. To get to Desmos, you need to go to www.desmos.com. When you go there, you're going to see a screen like the one in front of you. To go ahead and start graphing our two functions, go ahead and click on where it says Start Graphing. This puts you into the graphing mode. On the right hand side, you see a graph here in a standard window. And over here on the left hand side, you see a place where you can enter your functions in. You can enter these functions in y equals form or in function form. In this case, I'm going to use function form. So you've been given the revenue function r of x equals negative 0.05x squared plus 50x. Let's go ahead and type that in. So I'm going to type r parentheses x parentheses equals, and now I'm going to type in my formula, negative 0.05x. Now to get the power, I'm going to use the caret button, or you can come down here and click on this little keypad, and there's a place to go ahead and get a square. Now I'm going to type plus 50x. Now when I click outside of that, you can see a portion of this graph here. Now we know this is a parabola. We should see an upside down parabola, but all we can see here is part of it. What I need to do is adjust my window, and I'm going to do that by using the plus and minuses right here. So if I click on the minus button, that's going to zoom out, and I can zoom out quite a bit here, and eventually I'm going to see what, I, what looks to be a parabola. Ah, there you see the two pieces of the parabola. If you click on the graph, hold your mouse button down, you can go ahead and drag it, and you start to see more and more of this parabola. However, no amount of zooming in and zooming out here with those two buttons is probably going to make a really nice graph. In order to make it into a nice graph, I'm going to go and click on this wrench here, which opens the graph settings. Here I can go ahead and add labels to my x and y axes. I can also go ahead and change the, the limits on those graphs. So I see that my particular parabola is crossing over at 0 and 1000. So I'm going to go ahead and make my graph go from, let's see, so click there. I'm going to go from negative 100. I'm going to erase what's there and go up to 1100. Now you can see that the graph horizontally stretches all the way across the window that I have here. Now I definitely need to go up higher here. So let me go ahead and hit the wrench, and let's try to go up to something like uh, maybe 15,000. Now I got lucky there. I got it pretty quick. When you do it, you might have to experiment with this. But what I see is a beautiful parabola here. I can see the places where the revenue function ca crosses the x-axis. Those are the places where the revenue is zero. I can also see the vertex on my parabola. That's where the revenue, the money coming into the business, is the highest it can possibly be. So once I get a nice window there, I'm going to want to go ahead now and add my cost function. And the cost function you've been given is in the form mx plus b, where the m, the slope, is the number of letters in your first name, and the b, the y-intercept, is the number of letters in your last name times 100. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, just a generic line here. So I'm going to type in c of x equals, and I'm going to do 11x plus 1,000. So there you go. You see the line here. It has a slope of 11 and a y-intercept right there at 1,000. Notice when you put your mouse over these different points, it'll tell you what the ordered pairs are for those. So for instance, this would be the fixed cost for your business. So it's when you produce nothing, your x is 0, the costs are 1,000. You have two points here, 
where the parabola and the line intersect, these two points are the break-even points. It's where the revenue equals the cost. So what you'll want to do is write these numbers down right here because in the second part of this assignment you're going to be going ahead and locating those using algebra. The number that you get from algebra you want it to match these two numbers right here. So at this point we've got a good looking graph here. In the next video you're going to go ahead and save this graph and then copy it into a discussion board.